Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, we're starting 15.3 in Calculus 3. This is on conservative vector fields and independence of path in a uh, for a line integral. Uh, let's get started. Recall that the work integral that we've done in the past it, along a curve is f dot dr. We did this in 15.2. And that translated to f times the tangential vector uh, ds. And we saw that that was f uh, or the integral along the line integral with f dx plus g dy plus h dz, where our force vector field was f, g, and h. Uh, and this was the parametric curve C. This is the that's the path of integration we're taking. So work we did in a straight line in the past. Now we're doing it along a curve. Uh, and let's say we have some potential function phi. In this case, I'm going to use x, y as our potential function, so that our conservative force field. Uh, let's spell that correctly. Conservative force field. F is the, the gradient of that, and it's y and then x, OK? We're going to evaluate our line integral f dot dr along three different paths. So we're going to go along y equals x from 0, 0, and they're all going to go from 0, 0 to 1, 1. We're going to do y equals x. We're going to do y equals square to x. And we're going to do y equals x to the 10th. So let's start with a. Uh, I got, I'm going to let x equal t, which means y equals t. We're going from 0 to 1. So dx dt, dx equals dt, and dy equals dt. So f dot dr is, uh, we have our force vector yx dotted with dx dy. Uh, so our line integral, and this will be the same for all three, because we have not put in the path yet, uh, along the curve will be y dx plus x dy. So for part A, we plug it in. I plug in y equals t and dx equals 1, x equals t and dy equals 1, uh, 0 to 1 on both integrals. Yeah, we could have left them as one integral, but I, I like to separate them. It does allow us to put it together. So I did end up putting it back together. 0 to 1 of 2t dt. We get t squared and evaluating, we get 1. Let's look at the same integral along y equals square root of x. So this is our, that was y equals x. Here we're doing y equals square root of x. <laughs> so if x equals t, y equals the square root of t. And that leads to dx equaling dt and dy equaling one half t to the negative one half dt. And when we plug that in, our y dx becomes square root of t dt. Our x dy becomes t times 1 over 2 root t dt. Uh, this one cleans up to t square root of t over 2. Uh, and so we can add them together. We got square root of t plus 1 half square root of t, 3 halves square root of t. We saw we get 2 to the 3 halves from 0 to 1. We get 1 again. Okay, along this one, we have y equals x to the 10. <laughs> Same process, x equals t, so y equals t to the 10. Uh, when you work this out, you can see you get one again. They all equaled one and the path didn't matter. Okay, I recommend pausing it, working that out on your own, make sure you get that. So the work performed by a conservative vector field is independent of the path. Uh, if you recall from the fundamental theorem of calculus, the integral of a to b f of x dx equals big F of b minus big F of a. Uh, the line integral does have an analogous theorem. We start with f dot dr. Uh, we see we got d phi dx, d phi dy, dotted with dx dy. 
<laughs> we write out what that means. dp dx dx dt plus dp dy dy dt times dt. Uh, that gives us the function phi from t equals a to t equals b. And when we plug that in, we got phi evaluated at b minus phi evaluated at a. B was a point that was that's point P we'll call P1. We call A P0. We've got FD. Oh wow, I changed the numbers up. That should be a zero right now. And that's definitely a minus, and it doesn't look like it. So I'm gonna fix it while I talk. So we got the line integral f dot dr. For on a on a in a conservative vector field along a curve is phi of p1 minus phi of p0. So it's kind of like our fundamental theorem of calculus, but this is for line intervals. And again, this is for vector fields that are conservative. So f needs to be a gradient of some potential function. That's it for this video. Peace.